So it can be fun to customize the things that you own, whether it's your phone and changing the phone case or your car and wrapping it in a different color. It's always nice to kind of tailor it to your personality and Ableton is no different. In today's quick tip video, I'm gonna show you a few ways you can tailor Ableton to make it look how you want it to look. So I'm back again with another one of my quick tips. Every single day this month, a brand new quick tip. And today's one is all about customizing Ableton, really personalizing it to your own use. You're spending a lot of time in front of it, so it makes sense to kind of make it look nice for when you're using it. And there's a few settings that you can do within the preferences to really improve this. And then also I'm gonna show you a website, a project of mine that will really take it to the next level. So we're inside Ableton and this is the default theme. It's just so, so gray. And I suppose when you first came to Ableton, this was probably a kind of refreshing change. But if you've been using it for a while, then you probably want to change it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go into live preferences. This is where we can start playing around with how it looks. And we wanna to go to the look and feel tab. Now the first setting we can go on here is the zoom display. Now this is really useful if you're on a laptop display, for example. Now I'm showing you this so that it fits nicely on your screen. So I actually have mine scaled at 80%. This is what it looks like at 100%. Now, obviously I can't fit a whole lot of stuff in. I can't really see much stuff when it's at 100%. So I tend to take it down in zoom. So you can really make it as large as you want to. By zooming it out, you can make those small screens, those laptop screens feel just so much bigger. So I usually have mine set when I'm on a laptop at maybe 80%, 70%, whatever I can kind of manage really. Obviously, if you've got bad eyesight, you might wanna make it a little bit bigger, but if you wanna kind of really make the most of those tiny displays, then definitely have a look at the zoom display. Next up, we have the auto assigner of track colors. Now by default, when you start a uh, new project up or when you add a new audio track or MIDI track, it will automatically kind of pick the colors that it wants to. So it'll just pick it out of a palette of, I don't actually know how many different colors they've got, but it picks out of a certain palette. Now you can actually turn that off. So at the moment, by default, it's on, on. But by turning it off, you can actually choose the color that you want it to automatically do. So every track that is added will be a certain color. So I could set it so that every brand new track that I add is automatically in red. I can just set it as that. So now when I add a new track within here, it's automatically red. No matter how many of them I add, it's always going to be red. Now, if you don't like some of the colors within the palette, it's a really good preference to change. Now, another preference within here is clip color. Now, by default, when you add a track within here and then you add a clip to it, it will automatically take the same color that is the channel. Now, you can change this within the preferences so it actually picks a random color. Now, this might be quite useful if you're doing multiple recordings on the same track. So if I did a new clip here, it would pick it as a random color. So it picked it as blue. If I did another clip, it would pick it as yellow. So it's kind of going through them randomly and picking them out. So if you're doing multiple recordings on the same track, it might be useful to kind of see those recordings as different colors. Next up, we have a few controls here for the theme colors. Now we have a drop down where we can select a different theme. I'll come on to that in a second, but we've got these controls here where we can actually affect the theme that we've got at the moment. So we have a brightness control here. So say for example, you're out in daylight and you can't quite see the screen. You can actually bump the brightness up so you might be able to see it a bit better. Or you might be working in a dark room, in which case you don't want it to be too bright. So you can actually take it down in brightness if you want to. You can fully customize it from there. You also have a way to adjust the color intensity. So this puts almost like a tint on the actual software. Now, if you've been using any kind of mobile phones, you'll probably notice that some mobile phones have a setting where they have a nighttime setting where it kind of warms the screen up a bit. Well, this is pretty much the same thing. You can put a tint on it. So you can see there's a bit of a red tint at the moment. And then we can adjust that tint by using the color hue. So I can change this maybe to a green or a blue or whatever color I want to. So I'm always putting like a, a tint on the actual theme, which is really kind of cool. You can play around with that however you want it to. So if you find yourself using this at night, you might wanna bump that color intensity up, make it a little bit warmer and a bit easier on the eyes. 
And finally, we have the option to be able to change the theme. Now, by default, Ableton comes with five themes installed. We have light, mid-light, mid-dark, dark, and then live nine, the old version of live. So we can go through here and we can actually change the theme to make it look a little bit different. Now, some of these look better than others, you know, depending on your taste, you might want a darker theme or you might want a slightly lighter theme. The mid dark is definitely a quite a popular theme within here. Now, I also have a whole load of other themes within here. These are third party themes developed by other people. So as you can see here, these really kind of change the look of Ableton. You can make it really, really different from really light to really dark and a whole load of different things. These are all third party themes made by other people. And these all come from my website, abletonthemes.com. Now, as much as I love Ableton, I was really disappointed with the fact that Ableton doesn't have a way to customize the actual theme of Ableton. Now, I did notice there were a few third party themes out there on the internet, but no real easy way to make your own. So I actually started about by building my own website that could do that. So this website, abletonthemes.com, is the website that I launched a good few months ago. And we now have over 4,000 themes on there. All these themes you can browse through and download. Say for example, let's go through here. We can have a look at the latest themes or we can look through for a certain color of theme or maybe even a lightness. So say for example, let's have a look at red themes. So I can go through here and I can search through all the red themes that we got on Ableton themes. So maybe I like that theme here. I can click through to this theme. I can preview this theme and then I can download it to my computer, but I can also customize it if I want to. So say for example, I'm not too keen on some of the colors within this. I can click to customize it and then I can actually change the colors. So maybe I could change this gray and make it a little bit lighter maybe. And maybe I wanna change that and make it a little bit lighter. And you can spend as much time as you want customizing this theme to look how you want it to look. And when you're ready, hit save, hit download, and you can start using that within Ableton. Now, if you want to know more about Ableton themes, I've done a special video on it, which I'll link to up there. And that goes through how I came up with Ableton themes, what the whole thing is behind it and how to use it. So definitely check that video out and also go on to the website, abletonthemes.com. We've got over 4,000 themes on there. So you might be able to find something that you already like. If you don't like anything on there, then of course you can create your own. So definitely check that out. And hopefully if this video has been useful to you, then definitely subscribe to my channel. There's a brand new quick tip coming every single day this month. We're almost at the end of the month, so definitely check the channel out for all the previous tips, and hopefully I'll see you again in the next video.